Welcome to today's broadcast, you mighty earth-shaking, history-making, mountain-moving, giant-killing, demon-stomping, water-walking champion. God is with you. God is for you. God is your defense. Man, whatever you put your hand to is going to prosper. The God of this universe favors you. I'm Pastor Glenn. It's Thankful Thursday. A great day to be alive serving Jesus. Amen. All right, let me start by saying this. Nehemiah 8.10 says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Don't be sorrowful. It says, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. And so you got to get out of that, the humdrums. Is there such thing as that? Uh, you, you, you Don't let yourself be discouraged. Don't be bummed out. All right, I want to give you a couple more scriptures, but I think I, what I want to do is give you more healing. Deuteronomy 7, 15, I have healing scripture cards, prosperity cards, favor cards, good news for modern man, Psalms cards, power, might, dominion cards. All, I read them more than I read the Bible, just to get the word in me. Deuteronomy 7, 15, and the Lord will take away from you all sickness and will uh, afflict you with none of the terrible diseases of Egypt, which you know, but will lay them on all those who hate you. Instead of you being sick, why don't the criminals in America get sick today? The terrorists, the people who want to hurt America and hurt good people, let those people be sick. Father, in the name of Jesus, because Jesus takes away sickness from me. Matthew 8, verse 16 and 17. When the evening was come, they brought unto Jesus many that were possessed with demons, with devils, King James says, demon possessed. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, Isaiah 53, which I want you to remember, uh, saying himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Jesus took your infirmity away from you. That body part that's not working too well anymore, Jesus took that away from you so that your body part can work fine, and he took sickness and disease away from you also. I think I'll, te- I'll share one more. And Jesus, Matthew 4, verse 23 and 24, I think it is. And Jesus went about, I don't have the card in front of me. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogue, synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria. And they brought unto him all sick people, which were taken with diverse diseases and torments, and those who were possessed with devils, those who were epileptic, those that had the palsy, and he healed them. I think I did pretty good on that. I was quoting it. All right. Let's get in the mighty word of God. Actually, we've been in the mighty word of God. God's word is designed by God as to be like a seed. In other words, the word of God has within it the power to bring itself to pass, but it's missing an ingredient, and that ingredient is your faith. If you try begging, that's not the ingredient that gets, gets God's word to materialize. If you try... Uh, Anything being a goody goody, that's not the the ingredient that gets the the word of God to, to come to pass. Now suppose your car was out of gas, and you think, huh, here's a jug, and it looks like it has clear liquid in it. It's probably water, and you think uh, gas is liquid. It looks kind of clear. This looks kind of clear. I'll just put this in my gas tank. Is that going to work for you? No, if you're cooking something and it re- requires a certain spice and you just put any spice in there, a different ingredient, you might, it might, you might make it gross. So no, you got to have the right ingredient. And so God's word has every ingredient in it necessary to bring itself to pass except one missing ingredient. And God's depending on you to put that ingredient into his word, and that's called faith. Wow. Faith activates God. Faith activates the word of God to prove true in your case. Amen. All right. We were talking about not letting yourself get fatigued and bummed out and burnout 
uh, like a lot of ministers are today. Uh, because of people, some people don't want to respond to the Word of God and stuff like that. So, attempting too many things at the same time will affect your motivation. A lot of times you get on a roll and things are going so good on the project you're working on that you think, hey, I'm magic. I can do a lot of stuff at the same time. And you multitask and you lose your focus on the main thing. You got to keep the main thing, the main thing. And that is your faith in God, your power in God, your revelation knowledge that God is with you. God is for you. God is your defense. He's your healer. He's your provider. He's your shepherd. He's your everything. You got to keep that revelation, right? And so these people who multitask, they end up just being mediocre, never attempting anything great. I was telling you, like Rihanna uh, and and, uh, all these great women singers, even 80-year-old Mick Jagger, they focus on one thing. It's, and it's not mowing their yard. It's not cleaning their pool. It's not doing their own housework, even cooking for themselves. It's focusing on singing and on entertaining, stuff like that. And it's made them millions of dollars, right? J. Paul Getty, and you should see some kind of documentary about J. Paul Getty. That guy was a trip. They kidnapped his grandson and wanted him so many million dollars. He, he was like one of the richest guys in the world. The, and so they they contacted Getty, and they wanted like a million, two million, five million. I don't remember the story. I saw the thing like 30 years ago. Anyway... He wouldn't pay it. So they sent his finger or his ear to Getty. He still didn't pay it. He still didn't pay it. He, in his house, in his mansion, he had a pay phone so that when people came to visit him, if they needed to use the phone, they used the pay phone. And yet he was like one of the richest dudes in the world. It, like if I think if I had $2 billion... I think I would go to Lahaina, find out how many people were displaced by the fire, and build a million-dollar house, a thousand million-dollar houses, and put those people back in it and have them pay me back what they were paying with their crappy house before it got burned down. No interest. I think I would do something good with it, but that wasn't J. Paul Getty's thing. His thing was like art, whatever. Okay. Anyway... J. Paul Getty said that he's seen as many people fail from attempting too many things. Successful people fail by attempting too many things as as those who attempt too few things. That's pretty amazing. Even though Getty was a jerk, he had some wisdom that brought him a lot of money. All right. The Apostle Paul says, "This, this one thing I do. I press for the prize of the mark of the prize in Jesus Christ. I forget those things that were behind me. But he said this, this one thing I do. He didn't multitask. He did one thing. Philippians 3.13. Passion and enthusiasm are magnificent traits of uncommon achievers in Christ. you got to keep that passion for Jesus. You used to skip and dance before the Lord. Now it's hard for you to even raise your hand. Your arms suddenly got turned into lead. What happened to you? Come on. Let's let's shout the victory. All right. So many times it's because you're trying to get involved in too many things, too many requests, too many demands on you, on a preacher, can just, just be overpowering. I told you about when I first got saved, I went to Faith Bible Church in Monterey Park on Emerson, and I think New Avenue, okay? I think it was New or Del Mar. Anyway, uh, it was New. So anyway, the pastor had cancer, but he was like repairing the widow's woman's car. He was painting the church. He was doing all this stuff, and he died. I was a brand new Christian. I thought, Man, the doctors had given me two years to live, and now I'm at this church, and the pastor died. If the pastor died, there certainly ain't no hope for me. 
But as I got in the Word and found the healing scriptures and stuff that like I gave you today, and internalize them, personalize them, confess them, praise God for them, all that stuff, all the routine that I, you, everybody has to use to materialize God's Word in their life. Uh, I was getting better, uh, but I was thinking, if, if Pastor Bob died, I'm finished. But I stayed with the Word of God. I wouldn't break my focus. I got healed. He died, and I don't want to be judgmental. I love the man. He helped me when I was first saved. I'd go to other churches and say, man, I'm a drug addict. I, I want to uh, get delivered and stuff like that, and can you help me? Every single church I went to sent me to another church. Nobody wanted to cast the devil out of me or stand in faith with me and speak the word over me. They were weak. Even at Faith, faith Bible Church, the elder came to my house one night, and we were happy to see him, my, my wife and I. We were young Christians, a few months in the Lord. And our kids were sick with the flu in the other room. And so after talking to him for a while, the elder says, Hey, where are your kids, by the way? Oh, he's got a, he's got a, uh, my two children have the flu. They're in their bedroom in the other room. And so he stood up. And I thought, wow, praise God. He's going to go in there and rebuke the devil and rebuke sickness and lay hands on them. He says, how dare you have me in your house when you know that somebody is contagious in here? And he left mad. That spoiled my thought about how Christian men are supposed to be. We're supposed to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We're not supposed to be afraid of the terror by night or the destruction that wastes by noonday. We're supposed to know that a thousand are going to fall at our side and 10,000 at our right hand, but it shall not come near us. Listen, I don't know why I got off on that tangent. At the end of some broadcasts, I say, go forth and steamroller the devil in Jesus' name. I say that because in the 1980s, that was the how I ended every radio broadcast. I was on KFSG, the biggest Christian station in the world at the time. And that's how I would end the broadcast. And people would teasingly, you know, affectionately call me, there, you're the steamroller, Pastor Glenn. You're the steamroller. Well, uh, that was then. So I'm just trying to just say that to you, that we've got to go forth and steamroller that dirty dog, the devil, in Jesus' name. Listen, no evil's going to befall you. No plague's going to come near your dwelling. You are safe. You are protected. You are shielded. God is with you. God is for you. God is your defense. Go forth and steamroller the devil. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Glenn. Pastor Glenn's daily podcast is available on Spotify, his Pillars of Faith Christian app, and YouTube. I encourage you to support Pastor Glenn by listening to his podcast daily and watching his Bible teachings on YouTube. By sharing his content and increasing his viewership, we can get the gospel of Jesus Christ to more people across the globe. Let's encourage our friends and family to get inspired by God's Word with Pastor Glenn's teachings.